Um, no, okay. Um, no, that's not better. Uh, they're all good. How would, uh, uh, I'll never know. Okay. Howdy folks. If lately you've been dissatisfied with the whole way your budget is organized or structured, I understand. Been there, done that, you've come to the right place. Welcome the water's waller. There are a million different ways we could organize our budgets and they're all great, but which one is best for you? Today, we're gonna peek at a few different ways to organize all your bills and expenses and due dates to create the perfect budget layout to match your current financial goal. Whether you budget with a piece of paper and pen or an Excel sheet, you can apply any of these. I personally am going to use the app You Need a Budget to demonstrate all the different budget structures because that's the app I use and so that's what I know. And just to clarify my terminology up front, I'm gonna call our individual expenses we're preparing for in our budget categories because they'll hold our dollars for that thing. For example, you might create a groceries category or a giving category or a rent category. When we're bunching a handful of categories into logical groups, I'll refer to those as category groups. You can see how I arrived there. So with that in mind, let's walk through some popular budget structures and talk about what kind of scenarios or personalities they work best with. First plan of attack, you can organize your budget by frequency of expense. This budget structure seems to work best for those who are new to budgeting or those who are deeply desiring to break the paycheck to paycheck cycle and need to keep their eye on each and every dollar pretty intently. I mean, we all do, but do you know what I'm saying? It's pretty logical and helps you see your expenses and their urgency within the grander scheme of time. So let's take a peek at it. First, you'll start dropping any daily expenses in an everyday category group. This would be things like your parking meter or tolls category that you gotta pay every day on your way to work, or maybe a lunch at work category. Some people find that they don't need an everyday category and that's okay. But if you do have expenses you need to pay every day, you definitely wanna guarantee that you have enough money set aside to cover those daily expenses. So don't leave it out. Your weekly category group will hold things that don't happen every day, but happen more than a few times a month, like your groceries category, maybe dining out, stuff like that. In a monthly category group is where you'll find most of your bills will go. So rent, utilities, subscriptions, and memberships, but you might also have a dog food category here or a fun money category. When it comes to bills, definitely make sure that you label them with their due date and put them in chronological order so you know clear as day which ones need to be paid off first. There's no point in funding your end of the month internet bill if you can't pay your start of the month rent, you know? Then your yearly category group will hold all the categories that are expected or you want to be saving up for, like annual subscriptions, a Christmas fund, a new parking pass at work, annual car registration fees. The ones you'll totally forget about if you don't start budgeting for them now. Now, of course, there are always those expenses where we don't quite know where to fit them because they may not be on a consistent basis or they may not be as dire as rent or utilities are. Consider creating a category group called special where you can house one-time expenses like saving for a pool for the backyard or you can build up funds like to buy a new car. If you want, this is also where you can house your clothing category if you never buy clothes or your vacation savings or the ever handy stuff I forgot to budget for category. This budgeting structure is great for the new budgeter because it helps you see which expenses are most crucial and pertinent, fancy word, but it also keeps those further off long-term expenses on your radar so they don't catch you off guard and set you back where you were before. The second way you can organize your budget is by expendability. This is my preferred method and the coworker who taught it to me calls it the fixed versus flexi method. There are two main category groups that house almost all of the categories in my budget. The first is fixed. I put any expense in here that is routine, typically the same amount every month and are expenses I have to pay lest I be fined, penalized and or evicted. I'm just gonna read the categories in my fixed category group from my actual real life budget. This is exclusive Hannah footage, never, okay. 
It goes in order of due date. Phone bill, renter's insurance, tithing, electric bill, Hulu, Apple Care, internet bill, student loan payments, a couple of monthly subscriptions, my water bill, gas bill, pet insurance, and rent. These are all the expenses that I can never cut corners on or borrow money from because I always need to be able to pay them in full and on time. So I fund them all and in the YNAB app, I can even close that category group so I'm not tempted to borrow money from it. Those dollars are off limits for anything else. The second main category group is Flexi, and this is where basically everything else goes with the main characteristic being that I could borrow money from any one of these categories and it wouldn't get me in trouble with the law. Dollars in these categories can move around and shift around as they please. They don't have due dates. No one's expecting a certain amount of money for them. Those kind of expenses. They read, and I quote, Coffee, car fuel, eating out, fun money, gifts, home improvement, miscellaneous, and my fanciest category, sundries, uh, which is like toiletries. Now, whenever I overspend in another area and need to borrow some dollars from somewhere else in my budget to cover my overspending, I go straight to these flexi categories because I can always survive with less money for coffee and gifts. I sure can. If you're using the fixed versus flexi method, it's also important that you include a third category for savings in which I am continually building funds for auto repair, travel, Christmas, car insurance, and all my subscriptions that I pay annually, like computer virus software and my music licensing subscription, because those have always been the expenses that catch me entirely off guard every single time. And now I just sock away a little money for each of them every month, so I'm ready to pay that $200 music licensing fee once it rolls around. I mean, $199 surprise is not a good one. Now, you may have noticed that I didn't mention groceries or any pet expenses, and that's because I personally separate them out because in my brain, they're just kind of their own worlds. But you can absolutely include those however you like in the two category groups previously mentioned, fixed or flexi. For groceries, I like to have a category line for each week of the month with a certain amount allotted to each week. I do $50 a week because I'm just one person. I just like this visually and it really helps me know my limits when it comes to my newly established weekly shopping trip. Thank you, thank you. Because groceries are like just so easy to overspend in. And Julep, my beautiful pup, has her very own category group. Because that's how important she is. There are one, two, three, six categories for her. Uh, doggy daycare, pup supplies, her monthly bag of food, boarding, heartworm meds, and a vet fund. Including the pet insurance category I mentioned earlier, that means Julep takes up approximately 15% of my budgeting categories. Well, that's humbling. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for making a cameo. I love you. You can go back down the stairs and nap now. I also have a newly established category group titled Frozen, where I occasionally move categories that I'm trying to not spend in for a short period. Currently, as I'm working to pay off the last of my student loans before this national 0% interest period is up, I've moved a few of my kryptonite categories, aka clothing, and a few of my longer term savings categories, like my future house fund, to the Frozen category group. I'm not funding these and it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. This fixed versus flexi method honestly works so well for me. It just allows for tons of flexibility, but it makes sure that I know what my obligations are and that I'm always fully prepared for them whenever they hit. No more catching this girl off guard. The third way to organize your budget is just by topic. This is probably the way that most of us intuitively tend to organize our budget and it is great for those who love information. For example, do you wanna know how much you're pouring into your car every month? And wait, how much does it actually cost to own your house? We know it's more than just the mortgage, right? With this method, you will get a really quick and easy overhead view of your spending trends. All you're doing is lumping like with like. Yeah, it's a good budget right there. For example, first up, you might have a home category group. Everything home related right here. You have a rent or mortgage category. You keep all your utilities within this category group, like your water bill or your electric bill. 
and also start building up funds for any future home improvements you wanna do. If you're trying to rein in your habit of splurging on home decor, it will really help you see and understand how much money you're already sinking into your home every month. Do we really need new curtains or am I just bored and ready for a change? Next, maybe you start up a transportation category group. Of course, this is where you'll keep categories for car fuel, car repair, license and registration, car insurance, car washes if you're into that kind of thing, new tires, even a new car fund, hey. If you don't have a car or prefer to utilize public transportation, this is where you'll keep categories for bus passes, Uber rides, and maybe even a yearly new pair of walking shoes. They transport you. You can have a food category group that houses your groceries and dining out and coffee categories. If you utilize any meal subscription services, this is also a great way to make sure you're remembering to budget for those since those types of expenses tend to just absolutely sneak up on us. Maybe you create an entertainment category where you budget for fun, no guilt spending money. Netflix or Disney Plus, saving up money for future concert tickets or a date category for you and your SO. Maybe you pull a Hannah and make an entire category group for your pet. It's okay, you don't have to be embarrassed. I publicly admitted it to the internet, so. 15% people. 15% <laughs> of my categories, not of my uh, income. Oh. This was never quite so clear to me until I gave Jewel her very own category group where I could see how absurdly uh, I lavish her. Is that a verb? Mm. Y'all, this girl is nice. And last tip, regardless of which budget organization method you use, it's always a great idea to create some kind of category group to house infrequent or one-time expenses, where you can save for new tires or your passport renewal or a new computer since you know yours is on like it's the last half of its last leg. Drop a little money in each category every month and by the time that computer poops out, you'll have a major upper hand, if not all the money you need on that massive one-time expense. There are plenty of other ways that you can structure your budget. I've also heard of people structuring their budget based on paycheck. If they get two paychecks a month, this first paycheck covers all these categories Second paycheck covers all these categories. The point is whatever makes the most sense to you and helps you achieve and accomplish your goals, that's the one you should use. Is the way your budget's currently laid out really serving you best? Is it giving you the information you want or need based on the way your brain processes your money? Or would there be another way to better help you understand where all your money's going or when you need to have a certain expense funded by? If you have your own way of structuring your budget that you feel could be helpful to other budgeters, you know, you know the routine. Just feel free to leave that in a comment down below. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. And as always, happy budgeting. No, oh, my computer's dead. So let's take a peek at it. Go keep my ponytail, Spunky. Pretend like you're not reading a scrap, but that you're just being alive. Yeah, okay. What the heck? Where are all the red ones?